Shalom brothers and sisters and welcome to another video. I'm your brother Jedaniah and yes I'm still on my purge. Most High is still teaching me a whole lot of different things brothers and sisters so y'all continue to keep me on your prayer list and uh, I'll continue to pray for y'all as well. Now as always all honor and esteem goes to our Heavenly Father Yahweh in the name of Yahusha Hamashiach. And today I want to talk about um, living off the grid with free water. And we're going to go over a few ways that you can obtain water or free water, brothers and sisters. But while we're talking about it, let's check out these massive floods just for a moment. Well, let's just talk about it for, for a moment. Y'all notice that over the last two to three or even over the last month, there has been floods around the world. It's like the most high is letting them have it, huh? Even if they say it's um, um, Harper, one of the governments controlling the weather around the world, uh, it's still the most high allowing them to do what they do to cause all this heavy rains all over the world. And I know that's tripping all of y'all out, <laughs> but don't let it surprise you because uh, in the scripts, we're told that these things would happen and, and it's just going to get a little bit worse and worse every year. The most high is going to bring and allow all this destruction to take place to show his mighty hand and the stretched out arm when the time comes when he saved his people from the midst of all the nations from all around the world. Okay, let's check out this scripture right here. This is Isaiah chapter 54 verse 16. Behold, I have created the smith that blow up the coals in the fire and that bringeth forth an instrument for his work. And I have created the waster to destroy. So again, like I said, whether it's uh, them using weather weapons or having some weather wars around the world, doesn't even matter. Doesn't matter if it's them or if it's the most high directly from the Most High, His rain coming down rather than coming through the hand of a destroyer. It doesn't matter. It's still within His His uh, plan, brothers and sisters. Because He said He created the smith that blow up the coals on a fire. That means that smith, whatever that's already doing a work out there, that smith is going to make that work just worser and hotter and that's like um, if a fire break out in a forest, the smith would cause that wind to blow harder and stronger on that fire, spreading it faster. Uh, whether it's the most high or whether the most high allowing the destroyer to come upon the land and, and, and uh, increase that wind like that brothers and sisters so again it's still the most high and I want to remind y'all and encourage y'all that no weapon that is formed against us shall prosper and when I say us I mean us who is in the truth walking by faith and in the spirit of love those two tied together you will walk in the perfectness of the Most High. If you lack faith, you can acquire faith. You can ask for more faith. You can pray for more faith. Don't be ashamed if your faith is shaken and you need a, a boost. Because as we see in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, 
Well, let's just go there. Let's go ahead and go to 1 Corinthians. Where you at? There we go. Chapter 12. As you can see, it's one of the gifts of the Spirit of the Most High, y'all. Y'all see this? To another faith by the same Spirit. It's one of the gifts given to you by. Go over this chapter. Read every word slowly and digest it. Digest that spiritual man. Get a good understanding of these gifts that the Father can send you to increase you in these perilous times. So, and uh, also don't forget to pray for one another. And if any of you need prayer, don't hesitate to email me. And I'll put you on my list. I'm already praying general prayers for all of you out there. Brothers and sisters. I pray for the body of Hamashiach. Not the whole world. Like the script say. I pray for the world. I mean I pray for those whom you gave me. Not the world. Let me go find that script. Okay I found it. But I would like to mention before I read it. Brothers and sisters, do not be ashamed if you don't know what script is in the in the uh, Bible. Don't be ashamed. And don't let nobody shame you because you don't know. Look it up. Find the script. Then read it. If they pressuring you and clowning you because, oh, you don't even know where that script is at. Let them, let them work their evil work. You just find the scripture. You just research it till you find it. It don't matter how long it take. Go sit on the side. Find the scripture that you're looking for. If it's, even if you're talking to someone, have them help you find it. Once you find the scripture, you'll know where it's at. And more than likely, you'll know it next time. You'll know where it's at, depending on your memory status <laughs> but anyway right here uh, it says I pray for them I pray not for the world but for them which thou has given me for they are thine that's how I pray brothers and sisters when I pray for for you out there who are the ones in the body in Hamashiach you who are the sons of light, sons and daughters of light, sons and daughters of righteousness, who belong to Yahusha, that's the that's how I pray when I pray for y'all. I pray for them. I pray not for the general world, brothers and sisters. Y'all hear what I'm saying? Now, I do pray. For those in the city so that, you know, the city would have peace and I would have peace. Because that's stated in um, Jeremiah, I believe 29. Let me go there. Okay, here here we are. I was going to read this part anyway before we started the free um, living off the grid with free water. Okay, right here it says, And seek the peace of the city, whether I have caused you to be carried away captives, and pray unto Yahweh for it. For in the peace thereof shall you have peace. So you, if you want peace, pray for the peace of your city, your neighborhood. Now we're still going to see the um, destruction because, you know, we're, we're in that time. We're in the end times right now. So... You're still going to see all these things, but for you to have peace in your domain, your household, your environment, pray for the peace of that city. But up here it says, um, Thus saith Yahweh of hosts, the Lua of Yahshua, 
unto all that are carried away captives, whom I have caused to be carried away from Jerusalem unto Babylon. So this is directed toward the Yahshua light, brothers and sisters, who were scattered uh, into all nations. Build ye houses and dwell in them. And, and though this was the beginning of our captivities, starting with Babylon, then it went to the Medes and Persians, then the Greeks, then the Romans. Then we finally was driven out of our land into even harder bondage around the world and scattering. Though this here was talking to them at that particular time, this is also talking to us today as well. Because uh, we have been put in captivity in different phases since we left our land in 70 AD and the northern kingdom as well those curses of Deuteronomy 28 and Leviticus 26 have followed us no matter where we went no matter where we ran eventually those curses caught up with us and we felt the affliction of all the other nations upon us the oppression of all the other nations wherever we was around the world and, then, and even some of us was gathered and caught and captured and, and put into hard bondage. Now, we may not be in hard bondage here in the Americas and in many countries around the world, but there is still people being taken from Africa and being led into hard bondage toward the Middle East, what they call the Middle East. So let's not forget about that, brothers and sisters. Our captivity has been done in different times, different phases, different strengths. Y'all hear what I'm saying? It's different strengths. Now you have the freedom to build your houses and dwell in them and plant gardens and eat the fruit of them and, and beget sons and daughters and marry off those daughters. You know what I mean? You have the options to even move away somewhere if you if you desire, if you work hard enough, you can move away somewhere if you if you feel like it. Y'all hear what I'm saying? So naturally, if you're going to build a house, you're going to need water, right? So let's get into that. Go over here. And again, um. Do not be alarmed of what you see. The Most High is uh, letting that smith blow the coals. And he's bringing it to them and letting them have it. And they still not going to repent, y'all. Like the script say, they still not going to repent. Nor will they consider that this is the Most High's work. And in the beginnings of, their, of the destruction of their world. That they're, their utopia that they're trying to create. Now, let's go to this playlist, Free Water. And again, I have free energy playlist for y'all. Check that out, especially if you're going to be moving out toward the wilderness or if you're going to another um, country. If you're tired of America, you ready to go back to like Ghana or something on the right of return. It's okay to do that, but have a plan. Have a plan. Oh, check out those playlists, brothers and sisters. Now, right here, you have basically four different ways that you yourself can live self-sustainable and live off the grid uh, with free water, free electricity, free gas, and free food. You can provide these things wherever you are. It don't matter where you move to, where you live at. If you know how to do these different things, you'll be able to provide this for your family off the grid, no matter where you're at. So this information will come in handy for all of you out there who's planning on moving out into the country or uh, in the woods somewhere. Free water is right at the top of the list of something you need to survive. Water and food is something you need. 
So I'm going to make a free food list and uh, put in gardening and farming videos and stuff like that. I already got a free gas list. That's another one. Uh, you can, uh, where you can, through the use of uh, various methods, you can create gas, a burnable gas, and feed it into whatever you want to feed it into. Uh, hot water heater, uh, a stove, a gas furnace of some type has many it would have many uses if you learn how to make one of those devices that separate the hydrogen from the oxygen in water through the use of electrolysis and there's even a use of sound using sound to separate uh, I have to find that particular video and um, post it but anyway here are the four ways that you can harvest free water number one rainwater right at the top harvesting rainwater and in this particular playlist uh, a video such as this here all the free water you need for a tiny house or any house and uh, there's some tips right here to avoid while well, harvesting rainwater uh, five rain barrels I don't know what that gang in five bit oh okay they he's talking about tying in five rain barrels for hundreds of gallons of free water and uh here's another video concerning that by using rain barrels to catch water from your roof real simple all you need is some gutters channel that the, the gutters right into the um into these barrels link the barrels together through pipes and you'll be able to fill up and have free water available at, even for emergencies i mean if you want to stay on the uh, let's say the city water you could still keep it connected and have it available uh, if, if you're in an area of drought and you can't collect no more rainwater at least you have that to filter out and I got some videos to help you filter create your own water filter to filter out that um, city water or the storm water that's around your house there's a way you can use this distillery to distill the water as well now the second way you can harvest water is live by a river lake stream or pond and you want to live by those anyway fine if you're going to go out somewhere in the wilderness find a place close to a freshwater river where you can at least walk within so many hours to um, get buckets of water or gallons of water jugs of water whatever that you may have drinking water to drink everyone needs water to live so when planning your own house or home plan to be close to a fresh water river lake stream or pond if not if it's a let's say a saltwater river there are methods where you can desalinate the water using this method right here distilling the water you put that seawater up in there and heat it up that will evaporate the water and it will recollect over here and be fed right into the to a jug or something that you're collecting water in that's another way if you're living by you know with salt you know by salt water so learn those methods of desalinization to, to take the salt out of the water and this is one of the best methods uh, it does let's say you you create the free gas device you have all the free gas to heat up this you know heat up a tub of water or something and channel it 
uh, with the lid over it, channel the steam into um, something that will cool it off and recondense it back into water from a gas state to a water state and collect in jugs or tubs or whatever. You can experiment around with that, you know, while you're out there in the wilderness living close to a um, saltwater river. So that's the second method, brothers and sisters. The third method is dig your water well. I haven't added a video just yet about digging your water well. I think I saved it on another channel. I'm about to go find that, put it on here. There's a guy who lives, in, you know, out in the country. And uh, he discovered how to um, find water on his land using dousing rods. Look that up. Watch some videos on how to use dousing rods to find uh, underground water. Because that would be your best source of water right there. It's underground water where you can dig your own water well. Uh, put a pump on that well or a manual pump to pump that water up. This guy even shows you how to put a pump on there. But I'm sure you can figure out a way or find a video um, where you can put a pump on that well and pump that water directly um, to a big uh, container of some sort. Because some people are also using certain containers like this here. They got the metal, it's a huge square container, plastic container with the metal around it. It's pretty huge and it contains a lot of water. And again, brothers and sisters, if you're going to do this in the city, you got to check with your city and your, your county and state, local, you know, your laws to make sure this is um, good. So go down there and talk to some people and tell them what you plan on doing. And before you dig, uh, the dig number is, I think, 811. I think it's everywhere. You call 811 before you dig and uh, talk to your city before you dig anywhere in your county. Even if you're out there in the, in the country, you check with the county in the nearest city. Uh, if it's safe to dig where you at. And once you find that out, Go ahead and use your dousing rod, walk your property, see where you can find water, or you can do that while you're checking the laws out. You know, find where it's at, and uh, then do your homework and research. If it's safe to dig, go ahead and dig down in there. Set up your water well. Follow the instructions given to you. Okay, the fourth way to harvest water is through this um, method, which they want to call um, atmospheric water generators. Atmospheric water generators. Now, this guy actually brought one. This brother here, he's from Texas, and uh, his device, he, he set up his device in Flint, Michigan to help uh, give free water and someone sabotaged his machine. Can y'all believe that? Someone sabotaged his machine out there. And he also, when a hurricane came through, I think to the, to the Puerto Rico or one of those islands, he, he, he brought his device out there. It's a pretty big device. And he's harvesting rainwater with that, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters. So this is another way. And this here is just basically a dehumid a big dehumidifier. That's all it is. If you got a humidifier, dehumidifier in your home right now, you know how that thing works. It takes the moisture out of the air and it maintains a balance of moisture in your home so the air won't be so dry. But that that um device collects water out of the air. Because you have to dump that water every now and then. But you don't have to dump it. You can collect that and pour it in. Pour it through a filter into a jug or something. 
But that's basically all this is. Now this is a, another device here. Off grid water with air and sunlight. Where uh, this particular guy sets up. Wait, wait. Let me see if I can get a front shot of this. Uh, no. Can't see the front too well right there. Okay, let me see. Wait, there we go. Okay, now he spent a lot of money for this particular device. It requires no electricity. But it uses the air and the sunlight. See, when the air comes in here, the sun hits this panel. And uh, through the heating of that air and the condensing, it cooling back off. Water droplets are created inside here and they collect. And that is fed through pipes. Pipes, I guess, into some container down below. Uh, as you can see, he has solar panels as well on this roof. Brothers and sisters. So that's another way. If you have skills... And if you can learn how to make something like this guy has made, do your own homework and research. You also can put these these on top of the roof. Or, um, it, or it doesn't even have to be on top of the roof. It can be sitting in your yard. Brothers and sisters. Also, um, let me go on this playlist here. Uh, let's see, where is it? This one. You can combine that idea with, um, solar. Now, let me show you real quickly. Um, let me just get to, here we go. Okay, let's pause. See how they got this set up? They got solar panels and I don't know what's underneath here, but anyway, y'all watch the video could be batteries or whatever, collecting the power and storing it and it has shade. But anyway, you see the way this panel is set up to catch the sunlight. It has this tilt. Well, if you design yours in such a way where well, you can put gutters right here right along this here and tilt it up at a certain degree angle just slightly tilt it up going at a slope this way you'll be able to collect rainwater this way and it will pour right down into a tank or uh, multiple tanks surrounding this you know well, of course, you may not want to surround it all the way because, you know, you may need to clean the panels or um, repair them or at least have a way to move those jugs out the way or something. Uh, or put it out at, at a distance where you can have at least walking room around this place. I mean, around this thing and put your jugs all the way around it, you know, and have an opening to come in there and do whatever work you need to do. You see how it's set up? It's sloped on this side and it's sloped on that side. That way it's catching the sun as it's coming up throughout the day and as it's coming down through the rest of the day on that side. You can build something like this on the ground. It doesn't have to be on the roof, depending on how much space you have on your property. And uh, you can use... you can. Learn how to build your own solar panels as well. There are videos that teach you how to do that. And if you get really into it, get really good at it, you can make those solar panels as very efficient, brothers and sisters. Uh, but 
that's up to you and your household to start experimenting, start uh, getting an understanding. And you don't even have to do all that. You can just um, put together a string of alternators uh, through some creativity, you know, get a string of four alternators from the a junkyard or some of cars and test them to make sure they work, make a few modifications to those alternators. And you could charge free batteries that you get from the junkyard and refurbish them. Let me go to my free energy playlist. Uh, so I can wrap up this video and show you a few other things. But anyway, I just want to mention these, the four ways of collecting free water is rainwater number one number two river lakes streams and ponds number three dig your own water well and number four uh make you a or buy you a water i mean a, a dehumidifier or what they call atmospheric water generator but so those are some options to cater to your survival in the wilderness. Now let me go to um, this playlist. Okay, I'm gonna make a free other playlist. I don't know what I'm gonna call it. Free other things. <laughs> I don't know. But I wanna put videos such as this in them uh, where you can bring back batteries to life. I mean, bring bring the batteries back to life that are dead uh, and you can get these batteries free from a junkyard or how whatever price they want to charge for dead batteries uh, you can get these batteries for free or uh, go go to different places that have uh, a lot of cars there they, they normally change out the batteries and they set them aside or ship them off just check around to see who got free batteries uh, and you, there's methods to bring those batteries back to life. And there is ways where you can make your own battery without the use of acid, lead acid batteries. So I want to put videos such as this that will also help you so you can store your power for nighttime use. Uh, you can also convert a gas generator to run on gas and use that free gas method to connect to that and have an endless supply of gas. Gas going to that um, generator producing energy. So you, you got options, brothers and sisters, it's out there. You also can use spark plugs to create energy spark plugs and a magnet to create energy check this video out. but I wanted to scroll down here to uh, right here I'm gonna put this in a free other playlist whatever I'm gonna name it I don't know but I'll make a video about it where you can uh, basically create your own air cooler our air conditioner brothers and sisters through the use of a simple 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 method real simple method involving copper coil wire a water pump a fish tank water pump a bucket a block of ice and that's it well, that ain't really it, but basically, um, this particular video will show you how to do just that. So if you don't have AC right now in, in the dead heat of winter, or maybe your air conditioner, your unit isn't enough, you can make this thing cheaply at home with, and use a fan that you already have to cool off any room in the house fast. By just freezing um, uh, a tub of, 
a, a bucket of a small bucket of water in the freezer or a container of water. Put that block in a bucket. Fill it up with water. Run your copper coil around this fan. Use some um, tubing, fish tubing, to run that into the bucket. You're going to have two, one entrance and one exit coming off that coil wire into a bucket, just like this guy is making. This is the inlet. This is the outlet. The water comes in here, cool, is, and, and uh, the air passes over this as the water, the cold water comes through these tubes and cools the air. And then it returns back into the bucket to be chilled and cooled again. And, and the cycle repeats as long as the ice is in the bucket. And put a top over that and cut holes on top of the bucket that you may keep that cold keep keep that block of ice cold as long as possible it may last a full day and you just put one block of ice in each one of your buckets around the house you, you don't even need a bucket look at this guy he got a little bag with a little fan now i wouldn't recommend putting this on top because you know this is electricity down here passing through this electrical device i wouldn't recommend doing it like this put it on let it come down on the sides and then come back to over here. Let me see if I can get a better shot. Okay. See how cold it's getting? Negative. Now, wait a minute. What is that? 10 degrees? 60 degrees Celsius? I don't know what that's saying on there. I'm trying to see what setting he has it on. But in any case, uh, it did chill down. But anyway, you see how he got this here going right over the electrical part? And if that, those tubes burst off, it's going to leak right down into the fan and shock somebody or kill somebody. I would, from here, run it down the back side, past that point, and then come out. Then you attach your tubes. So if you know the water bursts out, it, it's gonna it won't hit, and you know it drip down in here and create some short out or blow out or something, you know, and cause could cause a fire or whatever. So y'all be mindful of safety first, man. I wish they would have thought about that before they made this video, but. Uh, Sometimes, you know, some people just say you'll be all right. Oh, he'll be all right. And then they post the video. No, no, you got to really think about these things sometimes before you post the video with your inventions or devices you create. Think about the safety of the people. Think about your own safety and your kids' safety. But anyway, brothers and sisters, these are different ways, different methods that you need to think about when you're moving into the uh into the wilderness or trying to live off grid so i created these playlists to help some of you uh, if you're thinking about moving to ghana uh, gambia or uh, nigeria or cameroon congo kenya always check with those states to see what is allowable uh, for your homes out there before you move out there and always have a plan before you move out there on building your house buying the land building your house digging water wells go out there and check out the property before you buy it Make sure it's in the area you want to buy it in. Talk to the communities around there or the tribes and 
form relationships with people in that same general area support you know form a support system out there so when you get out there you have a support system a system that will help you uh, even build on your property build your land you know have money available to pay the locals to help you build there's ways that you can learn how to make your own bricks by simply using clay uh, sand uh, clay sand and straw that's easy items you can find in any land you just need to get it hauled to your location and learn how to uh, use utilize how to use your own feet to smash all that together to bind it all together and then form whatever bricks you want to form and put it in a brick oven and or you can um, layer it. You know, once you stamp it, you can layer it. There are methods where you can layer it and um, build build your foundation and layer it up little by little and let it dry over time. There are methods where you can use earth, what they call earth bags, where they get these bags and they just simply fill it with dirt, local dirt. And they use tires. They're using dirt and tires to build houses with. And they fill it in with um, clay and a special mixture, you know, of um, dirt. And uh, they put a binding agent in that and then slap it in between the tires to smooth it out where you won't even see the tires. And then once everything is finished, they put some type of mortar um, over that to cover up. To cover up or beautify the wall to make it smooth where you can uh, paint it or whatever. So there are different methods and I'm going to be putting that in these playlists so that y'all can start learning these methods. You don't have to build your home your whole home out of wood you can use old-fashioned methods that will stand the test of time as long as you maintain it they will last forever dirt bound with sand and straw will last as long as you you know as long as you maintain it take care of it eventually water will erode anything and break it down over over time but with your maintenance and care of the outer layer that's covering that brick uh, that structure will last a long time generations where you can pass it along to your children year after year I mean generation after generation brothers and sisters so check out my free energy playlist check out the different methods that you can produce free energy check out my water list and check out the different ways you can produce free water or harvest free water check out my free gas list so you can uh, understand how to harvest or make free gas and I'm going to be putting together a free other list where you can learn how to create free um, free cold air in your home. Well, it's not free after you buy the stuff. And once you set it up and get it going, after that point, it's going to be free. As long as you uh, put blocks of ice up in there. And even that there takes energy, but you can uh, build your own solar panels and uh, make your own free battery, free batteries and uh, set that up, providing an endless source of energy to fund, I mean, or to do all these things I'm talking about. You don't have to have an energy bill as well, but... Um, This free gas method 
uh, not only using electrolysis to separate the hydrogen from the water, you can use biogas to cook, to heat your home, to heat up your water. All of your, all this uses is um, food, old food. Oops. Commercials. Anyway, this is a video that will show you how to make your own biogas using a container and some hoses. A little mulch uh, food put in here. Let me see. And um, that food, as it's deteriorating or decomposing, it will create gas. And that gas will fill in a, well, you can either put it up in here to collect and funnel it, or you, you can have you um, a, something like a propane tank or propane container. Let me see, where is the part? I don't think it shows I'm putting the food up in here. No. But at least he shows you how to build one. But anyway, I would study all these videos. There's different methods that they use here. Methane as fuel, biodigester. Uh, check out the different methods. Find out which one is the best for you. Listen to what they're saying. As you can see, this is just different things that he put up in there. That uh, food and old food scraps. And I don't know if there's mulch up in there. I mean, uh, grass or whatever you put up in there. But anyway, check these videos out. And uh, you'll learn how to produce your own free gas where you're at. You don't need no hog in your yard. Turn that food waste into gas, brothers and sisters. And leave that pig where it's at in the field somewhere. Now the pig has its purpose on earth. And it is good for that purpose. But it's not good for you to eat. Because it is against the law of the Heavenly Father. For he did not create your body to digest that particular animal. So um, some of you may um, get a pig just to throw your food scraps to it. Now you got another use for those food scraps. And whatever other methods that they are, they will show you how to make biogas, brothers and sisters. So check out my playlist. And um, as always, always have a fire extinguisher handy or nearby. Make it professionally. If you got to call some people to check out your wiring, check out your uh, fittings and make sure, you know, you got to call somebody or at least have someone who knows about these things to come check whatever you're experimenting with, putting together, whether it's free energy, call you an electrician to check your workout. If it's a free gas device, uh, you want to test that for leaks. Make sure things tight and glued and and, and sealed. And use a bottle of uh, water and a little bit of dishwashing liquid in there, and spray it on the the linkages and the fittings and the connections to make sure there's no gas leaking from that before you start using it. And you, you know. Uh, you want to be safe at all times, brothers and sisters. And uh, always get as much knowledge and information about the subject that you're trying to create as you can before you start. And always 
do it professionally if you can. You know, uh, you can even use water and electrolysis to produce that gas to run a car. Check out some of those videos. There is a lot of people who are doing that. And I got some of those videos on my playlist, my free free electricity playlist um, that I'm going to transfer to the other list. So you can understand the multiple uses of and multiple ways you can provide yourself with free energy, free gas, free water, uh, and um, free food. So I'm going to be putting together that free food playlist soon. Y'all look out for that video. And I thank y'all for tuning in. Shalom.